Yep, I've been using the iPhone XS Max for just about a week now. If you think this is an S upgrade year and there's not much to talk about, as someone who's coming from an iPhone 10 and an iPhone 8 Plus, I can assure you I have a lot to say, starting with the fact that I've never enjoyed using an iPhone more. The biggest reason to upgrade to the Max is for the big screen, which reviewers from your favorite outlets have used words like terrific, fantastic, beautiful, brilliant, and stunning to describe. The iPhone XS Max is like the best things about the 8 Plus and the 10 mashed together. It's bigger, but with no forehead and chin, which is a killer combo. As a reviewer, I'll often alternate between using a smaller iPhone and a larger iPhone as my daily driver from year to year, just to keep both experiences fresh in my mind. And the iPhone XS Max might just have me hooked on that larger screen size permanently. I've enjoyed it that much. I like experiencing bigger things on this really great screen more than I care about a phone not fitting in my pockets as nicely as it could. Bigger photos and videos on this nice of a screen are a huge bonus. And YouTube just updated their iOS app to support HDR, so big thumbs up for this screen. After being used to the smaller size of the 10 for a year, there was like half a day when the size of the Mac seemed a little bit awkward before I adapted, and then I just never thought about it again. In other words, using two hands on the phone more often hasn't been bothering me at all. One thing that supposedly sets the 10s Max apart from the 10s is a slightly larger battery capacity, and this year I definitely wanted as much battery as I could get. After just one year, my iPhone 10's battery capacity was shot. I could just barely squeak through a day's use, and that was with low power mode turned on. On its first full day of use, where I spent a lot more time on the phone than I would have normally getting it all set up, I had 15% battery left by 5.25 p.m. So that's what the real world battery life use was for me on a very heavy use day. On a regular work day though, which I'd call a moderate use day, I had 35% battery left by 6.50 p.m. and 32% left by 9.20 p.m., which was much, much better than my iPhone X's battery had been performing. What I can't actually tell you right now is whether or not the Max's battery is better because it's new or because it's actually better. That's something I might have to follow up with. Now the XS Max doesn't come with a fast charger in the box, and some people seem beside themselves about that, but it actually hasn't affected my day-to-day -day in the slightest. I mean, sure, I'd rather have it than not, but there's already enough juice to get me through the day, and I always charge it overnight by literally just setting it on a wireless charger when I go to bed. I get why this is a popular complaint, like people just want more for their money, but at the same time, my life isn't any worse because a fast charger didn't come in the box. The camera on the XS Max is the one thing that really makes my iPhone X feel inferior, and it's mostly due to the smart HDR. After doing the camera test and seeing those results side by side, I would never want to go back to the X camera. That's how much of a difference there is. The range of color, along with the level of detail captured in both brighter and darker areas, are massive improvements for both photos and videos. Let me just be very clear. Photos? are more clear, and they also show more detail. The Smart HDR feature means that colors pop much better in photos on the Max than on the 10. See for yourself how the Max captures a computer screen in the background on the bottom left of this corner where the 10 just blows it out. And you can also see in this very unexciting shot I took of this wood siding, the XS Max pulls out so much more detail in the shade. And again, you can just see more details in one camera versus the other. Like check out this candle. On the Max, you can actually see detail in the flame that's just non-existent on the 10. So the other new camera feature everybody's talking about is the ability to digitally adjust the depth of field on portrait photos to get a better bokeh effect, or a more or less blurry background, after you've already taken the photo. I found out pretty quickly you almost never want to crank it down to its blurriest setting at f1.4. You either get too much edge distortion, or things get blurred out, or it just looks fake. Honestly, I really expected changing the depth of field in photos to be my favorite new feature this year, but I think I'm more excited about the Smart HDR. It's not as fun, but it's definitely more useful. And you know what? I think the front-facing selfie camera does look like there's a bit of soft skin blurring happening. It's hard to tell, but I think there might be something to the rumors that there's a covert beauty mode going on. Like, for better or worse, this is how I look normally. Not like this. The four apps responsible for most of my productivity lately are Drafts 5, Things 3, Trello, and Ulysses, and the Max's snappy performance has made getting stuff done a breeze. Without a doubt, the Max does launch apps faster and makes little tasks like getting to your recent photos happen a little bit quicker. I've definitely enjoyed the increased performance, but here's the thing, in terms of getting stuff done, everything I can do on the Max, I can also do on the 10 and on the 8 Plus. It just happens a little bit faster and on a bigger screen. But you know what's funny? I acknowledge that I clearly have a mental preference. I like using the apps I just mentioned more on the Max. Everybody's talking about how expensive the Max is and most reviewers list that as a con. I mean, what do you guys want me to say? I also wish that it didn't cost as much, 
but it does, and you guys are buying them like crazy, so you really only have yourselves to blame for telling Apple it's all good. Again, I know people want more default storage for the money, but my iPhone 10 was a 64 gig model and I never ran out of space. And sure, I'd take the extra storage if they gave it to me for the price, but again, my life isn't worse off because I don't have it. So yeah, it is the most expensive iPhone that's ever been made, but I'm serious when I tell you, I've also never enjoyed using an iPhone more. My iPhone 10 screen got all kinds of scratched over the last year. It was awful. And yeah, I mostly used ultra thin cases, which I made a whole video about not long ago, and that contributed, but still, the glass was less durable than I wish it had been. Now the Tennis Max is supposed to have a slightly stronger coating on the screen, which I'm glad for, but this year, I'm not taking any chances. I've been scared into using a larger, bulkier case just to prevent those scratches, just in case. Just in case, there's a dad joke I didn't even realize. Regarding the design, I have three things to say. Number one, it looks nice. Number two, I get why the speaker grills aren't symmetrical this year, but at the same time, it's very unApple like which kind of bugs me. And number three, I don't really like the way the new notch hiding wallpaper looks as a background for my apps. It's kind of cool for the lock screen, but for the home screen, I feel like it's just too cluttered. Recommendation time. So as everyone keeps telling you, yeah, if you're coming from the iPhone 10, you probably don't need to upgrade, especially because something more interesting is almost certainly coming at you next year. Although, if you do have a 10 and you got some money to burn, that smart HDR feature is pretty great. If you're coming from an iPhone 8 or older, then this could be a good time to upgrade because there's enough new here that I think you'll be happy. Personally, I love the screen, I love the size, the camera update is awesome, and I'm happy with the battery life so far. But of course, all those things are gonna be waiting for you to upgrade to next year as well. Thanks a lot for watching today. If you have any comments, let me know down below. Also, check out the description. I've linked up some good stuff down there as well. Don't forget, I'm at Daily Tech, spelled daily, T-E-K-K, -K, on Instagram, Twitter, and wherever you might wanna find me. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.